Uh, so we can kick off the April meeting of the Bennington School District Board of Directors. Uh, the fir first of all, I just want to announce um, that there's a roster going around for attendance since we have such a full house today. So if you haven't seen that, uh, please sign it before you go and that'll be your attendance will be reflected in the minutes. That's taken by Mr. Bump. Uh, so our first, I our first agenda item is to move to executive session as per 1 VSA subsection 313A3 which allows us to talk about the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. So can I please have a motion to move to executive session, please? So moved. We'll moved. call that uh, Jackie and Chela. Any discussion about moving to executive session? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good, so the motion passes. We will move to executive session. Uh, can I please have a motion to uh, exit executive session, please? Uh, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Shayla. Any discussion about exiting executive session? No. Hearing none, all those in favor of exiting executive session, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Uh, I would open the floor to any motions to be made. All right. Uh, let's, let's have the motion made wait, first. Wait, and then okay. we got to get we somebody on the phone. Do we, let's first make the, if there is a motion to be brought forth, let's have it made and seconded and then if we need to take a vote we'll get someone on the phone. All right. I'd like to make a motion to renew the contract for Jerry O'Connor for the period of one year, conditional on the successful completion of specific goals set forth within said contract. Uh, the motion has been made. Is there a second on that? Second. Thank you. Uh, we are going to contact Jackie Kelly, uh, who's a board member not present, um, but to take the phone call and participate in this vote. Chris, will the discussion be after her yes. phone call? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> to get out of the building, should I dial mine first? Is Jackie in executive session with Jackie Kelly? She was not. I'm sorry? Is Jackie in executive, Jackie Kelly in executive Jack Kelly was not in executive session. I'm talking with stress. It's just going to have to be. Hello. Hello, Jackie Kelly. Hello, Chris Murphy. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Okay. Uh, there is a motion on the floor. Chayla, can I see that piece of paper, please? Jackie, there's a motion that's been made and seconded that reads as follows. Uh, the motion is to renew the contract for Jerry O'Connor for the period of one year, conditional on the successful completion of specific goals set forth within said contract. So I'm going to open it up for discussion right now. So, any discussion on the matter? Yes. Um, are there any other BSD principals who have a one-year contract? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Uh, but let's defer to, to superintendent. So the principal's contracts are like a perpetual two-year contract. Mm -hmm. They renew if by June 30th the board does not um, inform a principal that that's their last year uh, then it's a two-year contract because it rolls over for another year so depending on how you look at it everybody has a one-year contract if the board tells them by June 30th or everybody has a two-year contract they don't tell them by June 30th it's, it's kind of unique okay um, my concern is that with a one-year contract we'd be um, almost penalizing uh, Mr. O'Connor if you will um, when he has a clean personnel record Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Jackie Kelly, are you able to hear us well enough? I can hear you well. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 I made the motion tonight. So. Aye for Jackie Kelly. So aye for Jackie Kelly, aye for Jody Hudson, aye for Chael Scora. Any other people in favor of the motion? Aye. Dan Mux. All those opposed to the motion, please signify by saying nay. 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 So the motion carries four to three. The and can, you, can you say who the nays were right. since yep. you stated the ayes? So Meredith Capella. Chris Murphy. And Jackie Pruitt. Thank you. The ayes, the ayes were Jackie Kelly, Jody Hudson, Jail Score, and Dan Monks. So the motion carries. You want to stay for the meeting, Jackie? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jackie. Okay. Thank you. Bye. How are you hanging this up? 
Very good. Uh, so the second um, agenda item is public comments. And just to remind folks, so as per policy 7300, the public comments are meant to address uh, posted agenda items or ideas for future agenda items. So please introduce yourself and tell us where you live. Mike Bethel, I live next door. Um, I'm glad that you restored Mr. O'Connor's position to a degree, but I'm very disappointed that it seems like some people on this board have a vindictive attitude towards Mr. O'Connor. And I, for one, do not appreciate it. I've known him for almost 20 years, and I know I haven't been here. Winter basically kept me in. But I can almost guarantee you this board will have some new faces next year. We will change the majority of this board because you do not represent this community at all. Don't even know where you people come from anymore. So thank you, and uh, I wish Mr. Uh, O'Connor a lot of luck. I know you don't typically answer questions, but the, um, the contract for the administrative principles and the assistant principles expires on June 30th of 2018, which is in three months, and a one-year contract to non-renew, if you were going to do that, would be in, the, in two and a half months from now. Is it, Mr. Polkeen, is that your understanding? No, my, that's not my understanding. Okay. So do you have any idea when the new terms of the administrator contract might be I believe set? the intent of the motion is that Mr. O'Connor would work next year here. So it, the one year they're talking about is next year. Right, but if you, if you look at your contract, it says mm -hmm. that if you're not going to renew him, then you need to tell him by June 30th of this year, which is in... The board is aware of that. Okay. And then is the, the goals that you will put in specifically into a personnel contract, and typically the contracts are public, will the goals in, the, in Mr. O'Connor's contract be a public goals? That is the intent of the board, yes. And then will you share with the community the job description for the assistant principal and the goals that all principal, I mean, I know you can look up in statute, can look up the licensure, but I don't think the community is aware of what the actual pieces are that one needs to have to have licensure because it's the same to be an assistant <coughs> as it is to be a principal. Um, and so the requirement as the job description stands now for the assistant principal states that they either have the licensure for a principal or they must be able to obtain one. So I think it would be really helpful for the community to know that the job, the goals and the licensure are the same as the three principals sitting here who are typically the building leaders, not necessarily the assistant. Thank you. I'm having a, I'm a little bit disappointed myself because there's a lot of issues going on in this district. And Jerry O'Connor was a guy that I knew when I first got out of college and he took me in, <coughs> talked to me and helped me out and was there for me. I don't know what he did for you guys to say he can't come back. And all I can get from it is just personal feelings which I can't understand that because he, he's such a good person. He's such a good person to the kids and to everyone. He makes sure everyone's taken care of, especially the kids, right? Because right now in this district, a lot of these kids are suffering, okay? They're being called names and teachers are not doing anything about it and there's no leadership, okay? We had a meeting a few weeks ago, okay? And the superintendent's falling asleep. Like what we're saying is, is, is funny. 
okay? We're trying to fix all these problems in this district, okay? There's a lot of stuff going on, okay? And he knows what we're talking about. So I just want you guys to just understand that, you know, the kids come first. And a lot of these kids, okay, don't want to get up and go to school, okay? My son included, and he's a good kid. And there's a lot of good kids that's, that's out there suffering. And I need you guys to see that. I need you guys to listen to all the people that's out here speaking, right? Because you guys make the decisions. And we look to y'all to make the right decisions. And right now, you're not making the right decision with Jerry O'Connor. When I heard that, I said, what the heck is going on? And I'm just so disappointed. I mean, I'm glad he's, he's going to be here for another year. But I want you guys, we're all working together. We all just need to work together as much as possible. Okay? Listen to what the people are saying. Listen to them. Okay? Because that's how we all come together. We all have to work together. It's not just one person. Because it always seems like the board is making the decisions and no one else can, can top that. We just need to work together and talk with one another. Thank you. Good evening, you guys know who I am. Um, I guess my point to be said is that I understand about going another year and trying to meet goals, but I feel in my mind I've done that already. So we're just replaying this year over again. And so I, I'm really having a hard time understanding that point, but I do appreciate the fact that I got this one year, and I know it wasn't you guys that gave me the one year, it was these people on here. So I applaud you and thank you for the So what I'd like to clarify today from Mr. Colkeen and Mr. Murphy, if I'm gonna have these goals, who's designing them and who's gonna evaluate me? I'd like to know that tonight. So the goals will be determined by your supervisor, by the superintendent and the assistant superintendent. They'll be supervised by one or some combination of those folks. Okay. That well, will be I want to. Okay. Right. And, and, and since we're since we're speaking of goals, I'll 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 just ask this. So you've made public statements that you were never given any goals, and I've heard a few different explanations of what you may have meant by that. But I just wondering if you could maybe speak to that. Sure, a absolutely. Since you've stepped because I hear a lot of public comments coming the other sure. way. Sure. Yep. That innuendo, rumors, and all that. Sure. Because they come both ways. It's a small town, and a lot of things get around from both sides. The goals I made in Edie that were two or goals that Edie, Don, and myself over the summer, which I worked a lot over the summer, by the way, even though I heard I didn't, um, we designed the goals. Those goals were driven by Ms. Don and myself and we, over the summer, and we decided what they are. And then we presented them to Donna Leap and Jim Colquine, and then they approved them. But since I was told last year that Mr. Colquine had nothing to do with the decision of me not coming back, that it was a board decision, I felt in my mind that, well, then the board needs to let me know what do they expect from me as a goal to come back. So the goals that he and I made had nothing to do with you, or Mr. Rokeen, for per se. Is, is, we designed them. So I felt, what do you want me to do to come back? And I asked this board, Mr. Colkeen, I don't know, five times to meet with the board. Never once did you guys want to meet with me. You refused every time. And the only time I was, thought I was going to meet with you was, in, was just before a November meeting, and you sent me an email and said, Mrs. Dunn came in and talked to us. She, she said great things about me, which I appreciate. And you said there's no, no reason to meet with me. We have all the information that we have. I got it in an email. And there's no need to meet. Just keep working on your goals. And then in January is when I got the now renewal. You're not coming back. Evaluation means nothing. Because it wasn't even done at the time. You're just not coming back. So I need to know what those goals are. And who's going to evaluate. And I feel strongly that Ms. Ms. Dunn is the one that should really evaluate me. We work hard together every day. We get along great. The staff and I, we appreciate the hard work we do in this building. So if anybody should be evaluating me, it should be Ms. Dunn. So, so just, just for clarity, so you did receive goals? Is that what you're saying? The goals that I received are the ones Ms. Dunn and I wrote together. Okay. The so only other goal that I received from Mr. Colkeen and Ms. Sleep was that Edie and I get along and move the school forward. That was the only implied goal that was given by Mr. Colkeen and Ms. Donald Lee. And they actually said that's pretty much the major goal we would like to accomplish this year. And I think Ms. Dunn and I have done that. So, so just so I'm clear, so the, the numerous times that you said during board meetings that you were never given any goals, you were talking about, you, you were not speaking of the goals that you developed. Board goals. 
Okay, yeah. and so and who is supervising you on those goals? The, the, those those four goals that, that you developed with Principal Dunn. Principal Dunn. And who? And we, and we had four meetings that we met with Mr. Cocaine mm -hmm. and Donnelly. We talked about the goals. Mm -hmm. Four great meetings. And those goals, in your view, were all met? They were met, yes. Yes. Now, I understand there's rumors that they, I didn't meet them or I didn't meet certain timelines. I wouldn't agree, yeah, but goals are, are a year long thing. Now, certain deadlines didn't get met. Yeah, but I can tell, I, I wrote through, I don't know if you read my rebuttal to my evaluation that I sent you guys last time. I wrote it all. It, it speaks to every one of those goals. It's like 10 pages long. So if you read that, and then if you want to bring me in and have a discussion about that, which I think you should, because I should be sitting at a table with all of you discussing those goals, that's the way it should have been. And I, and I inquired at least six times last year to do that, and that once the disc board wanted to meet with me. So it's clear, so you're being clear that you were given goals. Yes. Didn't meet timelines. <laughs> On a few time timelines, I, I, the thing was, is where do we initiate to get it? Goals are year long, Chris. They don't go from here to here. Were, were the, the goals okay. that you're speaking of? Did they have timelines, or did they say, "Hey, there was the certain time like getting stuff on a calendar"? Yeah, but to, to say that I didn't that the goals didn't move the school forward, everyone there were certain times, yeah. And I was I was perfectly clear with Mr. Cocaine, gave him some explanation. Yeah, no indication that mean that well, that's 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 detrimental to your job. Not once. Okay. So, so in that regard, yeah, and I was brutally honest. One of them was uh, was tech, was a technical thing, was the technology, because I couldn't get anybody from the tech department at the, at, at, the, at the superintendent's office to put me on Facebook, and I was taking a class at the time. So every goal I did, I had, I was working towards it and, and had it in mind. I spoke clearly to it, and I'm sure Ms. Dunn can speak to that, that we, those goals were moving forward and being met. As of now, they're met. And it's March. So, so were the, uh, just just so I'm clear, Jerry. So there were timelines, or there weren't timelines. There were a couple times. I can I can pull the goals out. And tell you what the kinds of enemy. Sure. One of them was not putting the dates of the safety things on the calendar. Now I don't think that's detrimental to the safety of the building. So the next day I went in, got Ms. Moran, and we put them in. All right. The other one was a timeline for Facebook. Not my fault. Couldn't find anybody from the tech department. Tell me, put Facebook on the thing. I actually, Mrs. Cully ended up helping me out, and then and then Frank helped me out, and then I was taking my class to use, how to use social media. The other one was safety. All right, being all the safety things, putting all the stuff up on the walls. If you look around, you know the, the routes there, everything's there. So as far as it being all the timelines I didn't meet was was detrimental to the fact that that my job just wasn't being complete for a few of those timelines. I I can bet you I can go to any school. And you have timelines, whether they were met to even Mr. Colkeen himself for his goals and his timelines or anybody else. I was open, I was honest, I was forthright, never, and, and, and that's the conversation I have with. But that shouldn't be don't bring Mr. O'Connor back because he didn't meet a timeline. Okay. And, and that, so, so I want to know clearly who's, you know, if I'm going to, if Ms. Dawn is going to be my personal person for the goals and I meet with Mr. Colkeen, I just want to be fair. And reasonable, because I'm going to be honest with you. My evaluation, it wasn't fair, it wasn't equitable, it wasn't, and it wasn't done appropriately. Okay, we're going to move on. Now, okay, Connor, but thank so you. I just want to let you know that. So I just want to be clear. Edie will be my immediate supervisor. You, you're not uh, setting goals. Th that's not what I'm stating right now. I'm saying we're going to move on to our next agenda, agenda item. Okay. So thank you. But I just want to be clear, like when you want to be clear, that she will be my immediate supervisor, and I'll make goals and. Start. So I'll be clear. I am not answering that right now. Okay. That needs to be determined, and we're moving on to our next agenda item. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So number three, our consent agenda. So there is an a, there is an addition to make to the consent agenda that we were notified of this afternoon. Uh, it re, re, refers to retirements. So number agenda, agenda item number five in the consent agenda has no retirements. However, today uh, Dr. Donna Leap announced that she'll be resigning effective August first of this year. Retiring. Retiring. Yeah. Um, so that was so can I please have a motion to so so I, I would I would suggest this you. I, I would suggest this that e every element of the conversation about personnel that's been going on over the last few weeks has been done respectfully it's been done people have given each other fair opportunities to speak people have been paying attention and people have been listening for us to follow up the actions around Mr. O'Connor as we just did 
with an applause for someone retiring who has served this district, I think goes against that, that respect that we as a board have tried to use against with, with everyone who has spoken in favor of Mr. O'Connor and against the board decision. So I think that that was uh, inappropriate given the circumstances. Um, and I am gonna, I, and I think Dr. Leap deserves a vote of thanks for what she has done for this district. I think the respect has to go both ways. It can't be just one way. We gotta respect the board, but the board can't respect the people. The people is the one that's making the choices here. So, so sir, to that, I would, I would suggest the board has listened. The majority of the board voted in favor of renewing the contract, and that's where we are. So, so again, sir, we're going to move on. Uh, my statement was simply that we should not be applauding because someone is retiring. Right, but that's personal. Listen, all I'm saying is we're all together. I, I, we're just trying to work together. We're not trying to find someone to blame something for. And that's what it sounds like. You're like, you didn't do this. We're blaming you for this. Let's work together as a group to just be in apart from each other. Very good. That's what I'm seeing, and that's all I'm saying. So could I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? Thank you, Chair. I have a second. You have a second. I have something to say before I walk out. You've got to. I really oh, sorry. had something to say. You didn't actually close the floor. You just kind of got stuck and said, yeah. we're moving on. I think for you personally mm -hmm. to ask anybody in this room for any form of respect is ridiculous. And I think that you personally should be the first person to get out of the school district because I'm ashamed to have somebody like you on my school board. And you need to make sure that the, that the buses make sure that these kids are safe and not sitting on the floor. And that these kids are calling each other niggas and they're not getting, and, and these teachers are not getting reprimanded. Okay? But that's another problem. So is there a second to approve the consent agenda? Second. I, she Thank has. You. Okay. Yes, Joe. There's a correction to the minutes. Right, Please. So, so what I, is the proposed change I have to two that? small corrections um, to note in the minutes. One is uh, line 43. Um, uh, Prue pr abstain, Foster opposed is just going to read Hudson instead of Foster. Oh. <laughs> and, and that's okay, Richard and I Sorry. went over that already. It's <laughs> totally okay, you did a great job here. And on line 53, page eight, just a, just a small note, um, and that is um, in response to a question from Hudson, um, Coquine reported that evaluations of BSD are currently in process, and Jim and I spoke about this, and we understand. Um, he said yes, and then changed it to in process. Um, and he and I understand why that mm -hmm. is. Okay. Uh, so can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda with the change to the minutes as noted? Sure. Thank you, Joe. Can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Meredy. Yes, Richard? I believe we're not adding the retirement to this consent agenda, right? You no, can't. It's, it's, it's an SPS, 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 just SPS, for your information. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, any further discussion about uh, approving the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, the consent agenda is approved. Uh, we have the finance report, the treasurer's report was posted and as part of the public um, packet for this meeting. Uh, I move that we approve it. Thank you, Jackie. Could I have a second to approve second. the treasurer's report? Very good. Any conversation about approving the treasurer's report? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to educational matters. Thank you. Uh, first up is Principal Dunn. So with, uh, with the things that the board, we were wondering in the time, I think that would be fine. I, I think that's fair. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, number the sixth agenda item is policies. There are none, so moving on to agenda item seven, the superintendent's reports. Thank you. Um, I'd like the board to um, a motion from the board to allow that the last day of school for students to be June twenty second. It's a Friday. It's three days. We'll be taking three days off to one eighty. They'll still make the requirement with this one understanding, as long as we don't have two more snow days. <laughs> so. You could uh, Friday. <laughs> staff will still be uh, there working until the 28th of June, uh, but the, we'll let the students end school on Friday, June 22nd. But I would like, I, I had Woodford vote for that this afternoon if this board could verify that. I Charlie. move that we allow the last day of school to be June 22nd. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, yes, just. Um, uh, no, sorry, after after that, because it's just a, a busing question. 
Mr. Okay, so all those in favor of having June 22nd be the last day of this academic year, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And just an FYI, this is the 2018-2019 school calendar as it was uh, presented to the state uh, this week. We have to send it in to the state in April. It was uh, presented to the SVSU board last week. Just as a quick reminder, this is a regional calendar set with all the schools that send students to the Career Development Center with the goal being to align vacations and starting days and as much as we can professional development days so that those students going to the technical center don't doubly miss school. So uh, it is now going to be up on our website. I want to point out that because of what we experienced this year in winter, if you look at June 2019, we no longer add five snow days to the calendar with blocked out 10. So the last day of school is June 14th if there are no snow days and we put in yellow the last two weeks of June just to let people know that there is that potential because the way it was worded this year was the last day of school was June 22nd so um, tomorrow uh, there are a series of half hour meetings slash conversations uh, with the AOE um, it's going to be with Donna Russo Savage and Brad James and possibly some others from AOE, uh, your slot is 1 to 1.30. We did warn those as meetings and the advice of our um, legal counsel, yet we don't anticipate that we're going to have a quorum at any of those meetings based on the feedback that we're getting. Uh, and you can call in to participate, and if you want to, you can, uh, Karen can email you that number if you have, and I know some of you have already asked to, to be able to do that. And it's, uh, they want to have a discussion about your section uh, 9 report of Act 46, which is how we, uh, this board submitted one by the uh, deadline. And um, there, I do have a memo from the state that we received uh, today, and it's uh, it's from Senator Tim Ash and uh, the governor, Representative Mitzi Johnson, Speaker of the House, and uh, the chair of the state board. Act 46 schedule and process. We write to assure you of our commitment to the current schedule and process of Act 46 of 2015. Because there's been a lot of questions with the Secretary of Education um, resigning. Uh, what's going to be the impact on Act 46? This work is an important step forward for Vermont's system of education. We appreciate the hard work of community school boards and school staff, and to all those that have successfully moved through the process. We look forward to continuing this good work in accordance with the existing timeline and statutory requirements. So, uh, and that's what the secretary told me last Thursday when she spoke to the superintendents that um, these meet because we immediately we thought that these meetings scheduled tomorrow would be canceled but they are going forward um, before I uh, the integrated field review report um, was brought up the SVSU meeting uh, the chair asked that be that addressed so I've asked one of your principals Donna Colley who served on an integrated field report team at another school system uh, and also went through the training that the state provided on that to uh, address that report which I have copies for everybody you have that yeah he's got it and I'll probably keep one there you go so Donna thank you um, so thank you, and I certainly um, am pleased to share with you my experience as being part of a team who was um, sent to a different supervisory union to um, create this report for them, as you have received for our supervisory union and, and uh, school district. So as you know, um, the Integrated Field Review is an annual snapshot based on the educational quality standards. And the quality standards, there are five of them. Academic proficiency, personalization, safe and healthy school, high quality staffing, and investment priorities. And within those five high quality standards, there are 20 subdomains. So those are the five domains, and there are uh, 20 subdomains. 
Um, during our training, we went for a two-day training uh, in December as a very large group, um, and they were all of the individuals who would participate as the individuals who would write, review artifacts, and write evidence statements. It was a, a very, excuse me, um, it was an intensive training, and it was a full day, uh, two days, and we were trained on um, how to look at the artifacts that were given ahead of time. They were all created ahead of time and they were there for all of the teams to look at during those two days. We were to go through all the artifacts for the supervisor union that we were going to be visiting and observing. And then we were also trained on how to write um, uh, evidence statements for the districts. And that was really important because they had to be very specific and unbiased. They were not to um, I be I uh, show identification of uh, staff members. They were supposed to be very unbiased statements. And so we did a lot of work um, as teams in practicing that during the training. Then we were assigned to the teams. Um, we were each to focus in on a certain domain. I, per I personally was uh, safe and healthy schools. So I looked at the educational quality standards and then I looked at the subdomains within that and when I did my visit and my observation with a team we had uh, well it was supposed to be a team of three that we were visiting two schools within a supervisor union however there was a larger team so we divided up amongst members to get to all of the schools within the larger supervisor union um, and during that observation we had a full day we observed in classrooms. They were student-led um, uh, observations. Like we had a, our students bring us, their students bring us around within the schools. Um, so we observed in numerous classrooms, and then we were able to also interview staff members, interview students, um, and um, trying to think if there was a, a third group. Oh, and parents. So we had an opportunity to ask questions to all three of those groups. And then we met as that team that day. We created more uh, statements uh, based on what we saw. We submitted them to, um, it was actually Google Docs through the AOA. We then on our own spent more time um, making sure that our statements were unbiased. And then we also came back together um, I believe it was two more time, one time during um, actually like a go meeting, um, so all the team members were back. And then um, essentially what you are coming out with is the report that you have for each of the districts. And um, your goal really as a district is to um, think about how might the findings be used in your supervisory union or your school district, and how can the um, review process be used to support or refute or clarify other sources of district data that you have. Those are two main overarching questions that you should ask yourself when reading the recommendations. One more time. <laughs> Any questions? I hope that gives you a, a sense of the outline and how the process occurred and um, it was quite um, intensive. It was a lot of work. Um, it was a lot of time and um, but it was also very um, rewarding to see other districts and then to also have teams come and uh, tour our school and so I was able to be on the other part of that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, not at this point. We're going to let Superintendent Culkane continue with his report, please. Okay. The um, next thing I'm going to pass out was sent to me by SVSU meeting member, and the two SVSU reps may want to address this. This was discussed at last week's SVSU meeting. The topic is arming teachers. Can we go back to this? Oh, I thought you asked if there was any questions. Oh, I no, no, I was responding to someone oh. in the, someone in the okay. audience. No. But from the board, certainly. Oh, okay. Um, well, basically, I have a couple things. Mm -hmm. um, focus. I would like to. Um, it says here, 
Instructional practices. The use of technology in teaching and learning is inconsistent across elementary schools. Per observation, student and staff reports. Now I know in particular this board has spent lots of money on um, technology, computers, upgrades in the systems. Um, I can't even tell you how many hundreds of thousands we've spent in the last several years on technology. What page are you reading? It's on page four. Yeah. Page four. Page four. But this is also all of these. Right. That's the that's I know the it's problem. across the S, but I would like to know if we are using it, and I know that we're still having problems in some of our buildings with our technology um, not working properly. I've had teachers um, corner me in Price Chopper and tell me that they try to teach with their computer and can't get on it. Was it recently though? Yes. Because I had spoken to Vic and I thought <laughs> it was getting cleaned up. I've had him tell me from Lonnie. Molly um, and a couple other places. So we can ask um, Frank Barnes to come mm -hmm. to your next meeting to address that concern. And we spent a lot of money on smart boards and I really would like you know anecdotally I'd like to know how much they're being used because if we're going to keep investing in this stuff mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's being used and that we're offering our teachers um, or making it part of um, their professional development to be trained to use this stuff effectively with students so because if it's the chair's wish we could put that as an agenda item and mm -hmm. answer exactly yeah. those questions. What's the percentage of teachers who've been trained on it? Who's using, you know, what percentages of using smart boards? And are we getting reports of through the Mojo system, which is what they use for reporting tech problems? And I don't know if the principals are hearing that or not, but we, we could address it all for your as by, an agenda item. By so, the next meeting, will Frank Barnes uh, know also whether or not our secondary backup systems for internet and phone are settled in and done? Will he be able to yes. speak to that I as being a completed, they, hopefully, topic? I don't topic? know if completed, but they're close. So would Frank be able to speak to the use of smart boards, or would that be more uh, apt coming from the, the principals and their reports? We, we, why don't we do that for the principals can focus that on their report, what technology they're building, and we can have Frank so at our And I don't care meeting. if it's next month, but, you right. know, I just think that we, so, we sure. need an idea before we go yeah. into another budget season. So, so with the principals and Frank, we can give an update of where technology, current, okay. a snapshot of where we are in our buildings. Another thing, um, I would, this is my personal thing, because I'm not sure what <coughs> proficiently based grading practices are I mean I need a I need an update I need training I know A B C D <laughs> and I'm sure the public because that's one of the things across the um, districts that um, one of the recommendations is to develop an understanding across stakeholder groups concerning the practice and rationale for professionally based learning and grading and maybe we could have that on an agenda yeah that item. would be Laura Woodrow would come I know she's done that presentation I know, other boards but, but I yeah. forgot okay and my other thing is I would like the BSD at some time to talk about um, looking at um, PLP starting with our children as they come into school I think we're it's way too late middle school I mean, that's my personal opinion, and I think that's a discussion we should have. Is Laura also, Jim, is Laura also the person sort of heading up personal and yes, learning plans? Yes. Okay. Um, so with regard to. Um, and I know she's really busy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. With regard to proficiency based standards, um, it, it's my understanding that's also part of what the public information person, not officer, I don't think, but the public information person that was pu that was funded mm -hmm. in the most recent budget will be able to speak to, be able to do, do some explaining around that. But certainly if uh, members of the board feel that would be useful, uh, a useful use of our time, certainly we mm -hmm. can invite uh, Ms. Boudreaux I here think it'd to be speak to that. Let me just put another thing out. I think it'd be useful, even if everybody on this board knew what it was, which I'm not sure I do, um, for the parents and the people that are oh. struggling with it. Sure. Yeah. And there are people out there struggling with it. <laughs> I also had a question yes, about the report. Um, could 
um, for myself and for uh, the public, could um, could someone explain how the recommendations move from paper into action? So I, I think um, actually I'll just pull my notes out back again. So it really does um, taking this information and and with those two questions that I shared at the end. Mm -hmm. That's really where we're looking as an SU. So we're looking at what our continuous improvement plan is, and then we can align those two questions with their recommendations. How do they meet? Where do we, what are our next steps? And, but those really are the two focus questions, which were the, how might the findings be used in our SU? So we look at our continuous improvement plan as the SU, and even our building-based plans. Mm -hmm. um, and how can this process be used to support or refute so these are um, evidence-based statements. However, as a district and schools, we can say, well, that doesn't make sense because we know we are doing this or this, and our data or what we have that's really um, real here in our districts, we can say, well, I'm not really sure how they came up with it. Mm -hmm. Please remember that these are individuals that get a very small snapshot. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a um, set of artifacts, which Laura Boudreau had put together, which were phenomenal, because um, I, I received um, extraordinary feedback from the artifacts that she had provided mm -hmm. for the team during those two days. Um, but being on a team, you are getting a very, very small snapshot of a district. I happen to go to two schools, and there are many in that uh, district. I actually went to the BRSU, Bennington Rutland Supervisory Union. And although I was familiar with that school district um, just as an educator, I knew I was only seeing a very small part. So my evidence statements were from just a very small snapshot. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to take this and then really look and uh, look at what we know we have here in our supervisory union. And there might be things on here we'll go, mm, we might refute that. We're not feeling that that's an accurate statement about what our supervisory union can provide or is doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I felt like You're a lot welcome. of the recommendations were spot on. So I thought um, I'd like to see that moved into action. Yeah. Well, that, the continuous improvement plans uh, are slated for work on those last days of June when we will not have students. So that is what the SU is going to direct to the, uh, the principals to use that time for professional learning on that. So, so the, any other questions? On, sorry, before you. Actually, I thought it was a pretty decent report. Mm -hmm. I just had some questions. I so. Um, this came from Dick France, who is a Woodford board member and their representative on the SVSU. He brought this proposal, this wording, to the board last week. The board asked, um, the board felt that they shouldn't vote on it because it wasn't on the agenda, one. And two, some SVSU board members felt that it should go back to all boards for discussion by the representative. So we received this electronically from Nick yesterday. So that's why it's not in the agenda. So uh, I'm just bringing it, and I don't know what the representatives, the your SVSU reps want to so do. So I just realized on this agenda, the SVSU, um, we're not on here. Report to, not to on the there. report yeah. isn't on there. And I didn't remember that until I saw the weapons position statement. Um, this, this was something he brought up and we had discussed, uh, what did he say, that uh, we would still comply with the policy 5089, weapons prohibition and, um, other than students. Um, but I, I had suggested that we not vote on it because we represented our boards and our boards had not mm -hmm. been presented with anything like this. And we hadn't had an opportunity to talk about it. And SVSU, I didn't think, should vote until the boards had had a chance to speak to it. So. That's where it's at. So he's basically recommending that this statement be put out by the SU in terms of um, our position. So I'm of a mind since we're since some of us are just seeing this for the first right. time. Yeah. I, I don't think you would take it. No. Yeah, I think it should, no. be, on no. think it should no. be on the agenda. But for I will next put time. it on the agenda <laughs> for next time. Um, so I would ask to just folks consider this, um, think on it over the next month, and we'll come back in May to talk about that. Chris, will you 
post that? Mm-hmm. It'll be part of the minutes. Okay, we'll put it into the minutes yep. from last week's meeting. Oh, it's from it's from the SU meeting too. Yeah. It was right yeah, in the SU meeting, meeting, right? And so, just just for the record, so the this this proposed weapons position statement from the SU will be included in the minutes from the supervisory union meeting last week, last, two, last Wednesday, last Wednesday uh, which will be sent out tomorrow. For those of you who are looking for it, Sean Marie, did you catch that? Sorry. No, you didn't catch it, Sean. <laughs> uh, the the yeah, state. About SDSU, it'll be on the something. <laughs> you, you nailed the highlights. Yes, uh, it'll be in the minutes of the SVSU and meeting Richard. from last week. Yes, the, and Richard will be. As long as Richard has it, everybody. Has yeah, it. everybody has it. Okay, that's it. Okay, uh, thank you, Jim. Can I ask one? Is that the conclusion of his report? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just had one um, question or a possible suggestion. Um, because um, you were explaining how we ran into the difficult situation with snow days and that the outlying districts, uh, Pownell, Woodford, we have to make a decision uh, for everyone. Yes. And that busing um, is difficult when the roads are slippery. I wondered if we wanted to consider um, in the future something about um, remaining open with, with limited busing options, um, just something to consider in the future so that um, so that the school is open. Sorry. Can you say more about that in terms of what the benefits to that would be? We wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily rack up nine snow days. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So simply um, in terms of you know, being able to stabilize the, the calendar. Right. Okay. Um, and, and I and I understand the difficulty in the decision because we're you know we're we're downtown and but there's Woodford and Pownell and outlying areas with more snowfall. I just wonder if we looked at that how would that adversely affect kids that absolutely could not get a ride to school so it like they would lose the nine days mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to the idea but I'm just wondering how would that affect kids mm -hmm. that absolutely can't get here yeah considering just, Woodford as a prime example many yeah. moons my, ago they my older I was just gonna say that Jackie my older teacher friends say that's what they used to do mm -hmm. and that um, and that that worked well for them so but I'm but in just the, something to consider. In, uh, if I yeah. cancel busing in, in the majority of our are involved special needs students who require special ed education, transportation to mm -hmm. get to school, and I can say that there's limited transportation, I want to make sure that I am not discriminating. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, in yeah. today's society, I, I yeah, can see that being but a little certainly, too just... I mean, certainly angst over calling school, but the safety of students are always going to come first. Mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. going to come first. Yeah. So moving on to the, the chair's report, just very briefly, uh, there are some appointments to be made to, to committees. Um, sitting on the food committee will be Mary Capella again. Um, Jackie Pru will continue on the facilities committee. Uh, Mary Capella will also serve on the technology committee. And I will be serving on, as the BSD rep to the SU policy committee. Um, we still have not, uh, we still do not have someone assigned to the superintendent's negotiation committee, uh, but we'll hopefully rectify that by next month. Uh, I don't know if you need that yet this year. It's not this year. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a a blanket um, form of what the committees are, and I'm in year one of a three-year contract. Okay. Who's so doing the administrator's contract? On this board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be determined. Um, so they are meeting. So. Well, tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so moving on, so just uh, some, some items, FYI, agenda item number eight. We have the SVSU enrollment uh, for March, which was posted, the budget status report for April that was posted, and a notice that policy 7210 has been rescinded uh, that had to do with the executive committee. Um, so that exhausts our agenda for the evening. So could I please have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We'll call Verity and Shayla. Any discussion about adjourning? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 All opposed? We're closed. Thank you.